Get ready for a jaw-dropping revelation as we uncover the truth behind China's colossal 11 billion artificial project that's set to change the world as we know it. In this video, we'll delve into the secrets surrounding this groundbreaking mega project and expose its far-reaching impact on global economies, technology, and society. Prepare to be amazed as we reveal why this game-changing endeavor will alter the course of history forever. So buckle up and join us on this thrilling journey to unmask the sheer scale and ambition of this incredible venture that's about to transform everything. You don't want to miss it. The project's purpose is to address the growing water crisis in northern China, where water scarcity has become a major challenge for economic and social development. The project is expected to provide water to over 100 million people, irrigate millions of hectares of farmland, and support industrial and economic growth in the north. However, the project has also faced criticism from environmentalists and social activists who argue it will have significant ecological and social impacts. The project involves diverting large amounts of water from the Yangtze River, which could lead to ecological imbalances and affect the livelihoods of people living along the river. The project has also led to the displacement of thousands of people and the loss of cultural heritage sites. Despite the challenges and criticism, the South to North Water Diversion Project is a massive undertaking that demonstrates China's engineering and technological capabilities. It is one of the largest water diversion projects in the world and highlights the urgent need for sustainable water management strategies in a world facing increasing water scarcity and climate change challenges. The South to North Water Diversion Project is expected to bring significant economic benefits to the northern regions of China. The project is designed to provide water to over 100 million people, irrigate millions of hectares of farmland, and support industrial and economic growth in the north. The increased availability of water is expected to improve agricultural productivity, leading to an increase in food production and reduction in food prices. The project is also expected to support the growth of industrial and manufacturing activities in the north, which will benefit from the increased availability of water resources. The project will enable the development of new industrial zones and attract new investments to the region, creating new job opportunities and increasing income levels. The project is also expected to help reduce water pollution and improve water quality in the Yellow River Basin, leading to improvements in public health and reduced healthcare costs. The project's long-term benefits are expected to be substantial, with estimates suggesting that it could contribute up to 1% of China's GDP by 2050. The South to North Water Diversion Project has significant environmental implications, both positive and negative. On the positive side, the project is expected to reduce the pressure on water resources in northern China, which is currently facing severe water scarcity. The increased availability of water resources will improve the ecological conditions in the region, leading to the restoration of wetlands and the revival of aquatic ecosystems. However, the project also has negative environmental impacts, particularly in the source region of the Yangtze River, which provides water to the project. The diversion of large amounts of water from the river could lead to ecological imbalances and affect the livelihoods of people living along the river. The project could also lead to soil erosion and land subsidence in the areas where water is extracted. Furthermore, the construction of the project involves significant land use changes, including the creation of new water reservoirs and the excavation of tunnels and canals. These activities could result in the loss of natural habitats and biodiversity and have long-term implications for the environment. The same type of conflicts can be seen in social impacts, both positive and negative. On the positive side, the project is expected to provide water to over 100 million people in the northern regions of China, addressing the water crisis that has been a major challenge for economic and social development. The increased availability of water resources will improve public health conditions, reduce the incidence of waterborne diseases, and increase the life expectancy of people living in the region. However, the project also has negative social impacts, particularly on communities living in the source region of the Yangtze River. The diversion of large amounts of water from the river could affect the livelihoods of people living along the river and lead to the loss of cultural heritage sites. The project has also led to the displacement of thousands of people who have had to relocate to make way for the construction of the project. Furthermore, the project construction involves significant land use changes, including the creation of new water reservoirs and the excavation of tunnels and canals. These activities could result in the loss of farmland and the displacement of farmers, leading to social and economic disruptions. The South to North Water Diversion Project is one of the most ambitious water management projects in the world, and it involves the use of cutting-edge technologies and engineering techniques. The project involves the construction of three canals, each with a different water source and designed to transport water to the north. 
The Eastern Route Canal, which diverts water from the Yangtze River, is the largest and most complex of the three canals. The project's construction involves the use of advanced tunneling technologies, including tunneling boring machines, which allow for the excavation of long tunnels with minimal disruption to the surrounding environment. The project also involves the use of sophisticated water management systems, including water purification and treatment facilities, to ensure that the water transported by the canals is safe for consumption. The project also incorporates advanced monitoring and control systems, including remote sensing technologies and data analytics tools, to optimize the operation of the canals and ensure the water is delivered efficiently and effectively to the intended recipients. The project has faced several construction challenges, the project involves the construction of three canals, each with a different water source and designed to transport water to the north, covering a total distance of over 1,400 kilometers. One of the major challenges faced during the construction of the project has been the geology of the region. The project involves the excavation of long tunnels through complex geological formations, including hard rock and soft soil, which has made the construction process difficult and time-consuming. Another major challenge has been the displacement of people living in the areas where the canals and reservoirs are being constructed. The project has led to the relocation of thousands of people who have had to leave their homes and farms to make way for the construction of the project. The project has also faced challenges related to environmental sustainability. The diversion of the water from the Yangtze River could lead to ecological imbalances and affect the livelihoods of people living along the river. Finally, the project has faced financial challenges, with the estimated cost of the project increasing over time. The project's funding has been provided by the Chinese government, and the project's cost has been a major concern for policymakers. Its funding and financing have been a major concern for policymakers. The project is estimated to cost over $80 billion, and its funding has been provided by the Chinese government. The project's financing has involved a mix of sources, including government bonds, bank loans, and private investments. The Chinese government has issued special bonds to finance the project, and these bonds have been purchased by both domestic and foreign investors. The project has also received financial support from international organizations, including the World Bank, which provided a loan of $1 billion to support the project's construction. In addition to government funding, the project has also involved private investments. Several private companies have been involved in the construction of the project, including engineering and construction firms. The project's financing has been a major concern for policymakers as the project's cost has increased significantly since its initial conception. The project's funding and financing have also been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to a slowdown in economic growth and affected government revenues. The project is a significant step towards addressing China's water crisis, but more needs to be done to ensure sustainable water management in the country. China is the world's most populous country, and its rapid economic growth and urbanization have put significant pressure on the country's water resources. The Chinese government has recognized the importance of sustainable water management and has developed several policies and initiatives to address the issue. The government has emphasized the need to conserve water resources and reduce water pollution, and has implemented measures to improve water use efficiency and increase investment in water infrastructure. The government has also encouraged the development of new technologies and innovations to improve water management, including the use of advanced water treatment and recycling technologies. Looking to the future, China faces several challenges in managing its water resources, including the impact of climate change and increasing demand for water due to population growth and urbanization. The country will need to continue investing in water infrastructure and implementing sustainable water management policies to ensure the long-term availability and quality of water resources. The project has significant international implications, as it involves the diversion of water from the Yangtze River, which is one of the world's largest rivers. The project has been criticized by some environmentalists and policymakers outside of China, who argue that the diversion of water could have significant ecological and social impacts downstream. There are also concerns that the project could lead to water conflicts between China and downstream countries, particularly those in Southeast Asia. The diversion of water could potentially reduce the amount of water flowing downstream and affect the livelihood of people living in those countries. On the other hand, the project could have positive implications for regional stability and economic growth. The project could provide a reliable source of water for cities in northern China, who have faced water shortages in the past. These could help to reduce social tensions and improve economic development in the region. Furthermore, the project has significant implications for global water management and the future of large-scale infrastructure projects. The project demonstrates China's ability to undertake ambitious infrastructure projects and its commitment to addressing its water crisis, which could spur other countries facing similar challenges to pursue similar solutions.
The project has significant implications for regional development and urbanization in China. The project aims to provide a reliable source of water to cities in northern China, including Beijing, Tianjin, and other major urban centers. This could help to support the growth and development of these cities by ensuring a stable supply of water for drinking, sanitation, and industrial uses. The project could also have an impact on rural areas, particularly those in the north that have historically faced water shortages. The project could help support agriculture and other economic activities in the areas by providing a reliable source of irrigation water. However, there are concerns that the project could also contribute to the urban-rural divide in China. Some critics argue that the project could prioritize the needs of urban areas over rural areas, and that the diversion of water could lead to social and economic inequality. Furthermore, the project could have implications for the environment and ecosystems in the regions surrounding the canal. The construction of the canal and associated infrastructure could lead to land use changes, habitat loss, and other environmental impacts that could affect the livelihoods of rural communities. The project has significant political implications for the Chinese government. The project has been touted as a major achievement for the government and a symbol of its ability to tackle major infrastructure challenges. The project has also been used as a tool for regional development and as a means of demonstrating the government's commitment to promoting economic growth in the north. However, the project has also faced criticism and controversy, particularly with regards to its environmental and social impacts. The project has been criticized for its potential to exacerbate social and economic inequality, as well as for the potential environmental damage caused by the diversion of water. The government's response to these criticisms will have important political implications, both domestically and internationally. The government's ability to manage the environmental and social impacts of the project and to address the concerns of the affected communities will be closely watched by both domestic and international observers. Furthermore, the project has implications for the government's relationship with other countries in the region. The diversion of water from the Yangtze River to northern China has the potential to affect downstream countries, such as Vietnam and Cambodia, and could lead to tensions over water resources in the region. The project demonstrates the feasibility of large-scale infrastructure projects to address water scarcity and highlights the importance of integrated water management. Other countries facing water scarcity and drought, such as India, Australia, and parts of Africa, could potentially replicate the project's approach to water management. However, each region has its unique characteristics and challenges, and any replication of the project would require careful consideration of local conditions and needs. Furthermore, the South to North Water Diversion Project has been criticized for its environmental and social impacts, and any replication of the project would need to carefully consider the potential impacts on local communities and ecosystems. Despite these challenges, the project's success demonstrates the potential for large-scale infrastructure projects to address water scarcity and promote sustainable water management. The project could serve as a model for other countries facing similar challenges, and its innovative approach to water management could inspire new technologies and innovations in the field. Thanks for watching the video till the end. See you in the next one.